I honestly was not planning to do a video about CBL Marina, the new Microsoft Linux distribution, but for every single day for the past week, it has been in my newsfeed. So I'm going to do a video on it so I can just stop acknowledging that it exists. The reason why I wasn't going to do a video on it is because I don't know why everybody is pretending this thing is new. It's not new. Firstly, it's existed since 2020. And secondly, it's already available inside of Windows, and it's what they're using to make GUI apps work in WSL2. And I literally mentioned it in that video by name two months ago. But because it's in the news right now, let's actually get into what it actually is. So CBL stands for Common Base Linux. They haven't released a public statement on the name, but you can basically interpret what the meaning's supposed to be going by the description on GitHub. So as it says here, CBL Marina has been engineered with the notion that a small common core set of packages can address the universal needs of first party cloud and edge services, while allowing individual teams to layer additional packages on top of the common core to produce images for their workloads. Okay, sure, it's, it's Linux. We all understand it's Linux, but why does it actually exist? Why did Microsoft go out of their way to make their own Linux distribution? Now, unlike all of the titles out there will make it seem like if you just read the title and nothing else, it's not intended to be a desktop distribution. What this is, is through and through a Linux server distro. Yeah, you could install it on a desktop and you could install the missing libraries that you would actually need to get a graphical environment working. And you could install that graphical environment with Xorg and then install like, I don't know, a window manager or GNOME or whatever you want to have on top of it. You could do that. Should you? Maybe not. Maybe you can pick something else, literally anything else, that isn't a server distro. I know that everyone still likes to think of Microsoft as the company they were back in the 90s and early 2000s that thought that Windows could do everything and everything else just didn't matter. But Microsoft has really changed since then and they understand the limitations that actually exist with Windows. And this is why on their Azure servers, they do offer Linux. Sure, it might not be the main thing they offer because they do want to sell you the Microsoft products, but they understand that there are some use cases where Linux is just going to be better. You might argue all use cases, but Microsoft is trying to run a company here, so they're not going to acknowledge that part of it. So basically what CBL Marina has been used for is to run some of Microsoft's server infrastructure. They call it cloud infrastructure. I refuse to say that word. And sure, because this is just Linux, they could do everything on Ubuntu or Debian or Fedora or even Arch Linux servers. They absolutely could do that. The problem with relying on someone else's distro though, when you're at the scale of someone like Microsoft, is what if, say, the distro maintainers decide we're just not going to maintain the distro anymore or maintain the version you're currently using? This is actually a really big problem with Ubuntu where the different versions of Ubuntu basically get deprecated very, very quickly relative to other distros and other operating systems. And secondly, controlling your own distro gives you absolute control over how that distro is set up when you first install it. So if you're using something like Ubuntu instead, maybe when you upgrade from one version to another, some programs you need change, maybe the versions you need change, maybe applications you don't need are now installed. If you control the distro, you can make it set up exactly the way you need it out of the box without having to worry about any of that extra fiddling around between versions. This is very, very important when you're trying to maintain something at the scale of something like Microsoft. Because there's no feasible way to go and configure each of those servers individually. There are ways you can automate that, but if you can just remove that configuration step altogether and have the installed system be exactly what you need it to be, that removes any of that extra hassle. Now, unlike normal distros, it's hard to call it just a distro. What it really is, is a set of tools to go and build your own custom distro. Not to the extent of something like LFS, where you're doing everything from scratch. It still has that core set of stuff that Microsoft does think is important for whatever use cases they're using it for. But 
it's not just going to be used for a single use case. It might be used for running some of the backend stuff on Azure or the other use case they're using it for, which is running GUI apps inside of WSL2. The old way you'd get GUI apps working inside of WSL basically involved you setting stuff up on the distro you've installed, whether that is Ubuntu, Debian, or whatever else it is. This is referred to as your user distro. And if you then swapped out to a different distro, you would have to set all that stuff up again. Otherwise, none of the GUI apps would actually work. Microsoft's solution, though, is a bit of a hack, and I kind of love it. So basically what they're doing is instead of just running your user distro, they're also running CBL Marina in the background. And then inside of CBL Marina, it's going to run X Wayland and Western to actually draw the GUI apps, a Pulse audio server to make the audio actually work. And then rather than just running the application inside of the user distro, it's going to run the app there and then basically delegate all of that other work into CBL Marina, and that's going to handle actually making the app actually viewable. And the nice benefit you get here is you can actually swap out your user distro and have GUI apps just continue to work without much hassle at all. So you never actually touch any of this CBL stuff. This is something that Microsoft has set up for you, and this is honestly a really great hack and I love this solution. Okay, that's cool and all. We know why Microsoft made this. They actually have use cases where Windows isn't going to get everything they want done. But why release it? There's no reason why they had to release it publicly. The big fuss about this is the fact that Microsoft released this out of nowhere. There was no marketing. There was no promotion. They just made the GitHub public and now it's public. And all of this circles back to Microsoft loves open source, at least from a pragmatic aspect. They love the fact that they can get community development so they don't have to just pay developers to get everything done. They love the fact that people will just test their broken code completely for free and tell them why it's broken. They don't need even hire as many bug testers, you'll just volunteer to do it. And they love the fact that by having some sort of positive relationship with open source, it gives them a good public image. There's no benefit they really get from trying to keep this private. I don't think Microsoft is in the game to start offering support for a Linux distribution. They know that that market is already completely taken up by companies like Red Hat, so it just makes sense to go for the other route and treat it more like something like, say, VS Code. Make it open source, make people kind of like it like that, and get all the benefits you get from it being open source. Now, when I said this is really a set of tools for building your own Linux distribution, I really did mean that. So they don't actually distribute an ISO if you want to install this. There is a quick start guide, and this is going to help you set up a VM image, but when it gets to the ISO image section, you actually have to go and build your own ISO. Obviously, the quick start guide isn't intended to be the most complicated way to install it, and it takes you through every step you need to take to actually get an ISO actually set up. It'll even walk you through things like actually installing the ISO, but there are more complicated installs that'll take you through some more advanced steps you may want to take. Things like, say, setting up the packages you want to have installed, customizing the kernel, even setting up an installer. This is not a distro made for people who are new to Linux or who want to set up like a web server for their blog and get it done in an afternoon. This is a distro made for system admins who want to make sure the servers are actually running are set up exactly the way they need to be set up. For the people who are worried about how much CPU time their system is using, how much electricity cost it has, and want to cut down those costs as much as possible to save even just fractions of cents. Because if you're running an entire data center, those fractions of cents will add up very, very quickly. Now, amusingly, keeping all that in mind, there's also a GUI installer. Now, obviously, there's not just a GUI installer. Sometimes you're going to install it on something that doesn't actually have any graphical capabilities and you want to have a CLI output. That does exist as well. But being by Microsoft, obviously, a GUI is here as well. Now, I know that whenever Microsoft breathes near anything related to Linux, someone is going to say, Embrace, extend, extinguish. But I don't think in this case that really applies. They're not putting any marketing push behind this. 
I don't think they're trying to use this to take over the Linux server space. I don't think that really makes any sense. Maybe there would be some argument there if they actually wanted people to know about this, but the fact that they just released it and didn't really do anything about it makes that claim seem kind of weird. Sure, maybe you don't want to use a Microsoft Linux distribution. I know I've heard some people saying, oh, it's going to be full of spyware and they're going to be farming your data. Firstly, there's literally no evidence that's actually happening in this case, but I can understand why you'd be worried about installing something like this. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about CBL Marina. Is this something you're going to use on a daily basis? Is it something that actually really is going to improve your workflow? Or is it way outside of your wheelhouse that you don't even care that it even exists? Let me know down below. And if you like this video and you'd like to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, all linked in the description down below. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson and Plays where I live stream twice a week and upload about five or so YouTube shorts. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea where I upload a audio release, basically anywhere you can find an audio podcast and a video release on YouTube and Odyssey. And this channel's available over on Odyssey. And that's going to be it for me. And I'm out. That was a lot of ands. I should probably fix that.